thousand years later. Sup? Da. Somebody hacked into and, and somebody. Around five years ago, I was in college and in the market for a new iPhone. The one I currently had at the time was pretty old and starting to have major problems. The biggest one was that no matter what charger I used, the phone wouldn't charge half the time. You had to unplug it and plug it back in about 10 different times before it might work. I wasn't making a whole lot of money at the time either, and I wanted to get the best deal that I could. I was in college at the time and a freshman. One day, I casually mentioned to my friend Alex that I needed a new phone. Alex was one of my college friends who I had a class with, and we sat next to each other. He told me that he knew a kid who was selling an iPhone, and he had asked Alex if he would buy it, but Alex didn't need one at the time. He told me the price that he was selling it for, and I was interested. I figured that this would be the cheapest cost that I could get the new iPhone for. Plus, it was the current generation phone, which I believe was the 7 or 8 at the time. I asked Alex who the kid was, and he said that it was a guy named Drew who used to go to his high school. Alex was from the same city that my college was in, by the way. Anyways, I asked him for Drew's number, and Alex didn't have it, but he told me that he would ask him the next time he saw him. Within a couple of days, Alex told me that Drew still had the phone for sale, and he was willing to sell it to me. He told me that he gave Drew my number, and he would text me about buying the phone. But he didn't text me that day. The following day, he did, asking if I wanted to buy the phone. And I said yes, then confirmed the price with him, and luckily, it was still the same. Drew sent an address of a park, and said that he would sell me the phone there, and to come when he got off of work at about 9pm that night. I went to an ATM, and withdrew the money. Then Drew texted me shortly after 9pm, saying that he was done with work and to drive to the location. It was roughly a 10 minute drive to a quieter side of town. I arrived at the park, which was like a nature walking trail, and then had a park area for picnics and stuff. Nobody else was there, because it was now dark out, and I think that technically the park was closed. It was a little bit confusing, because the park seemed rather big, and had a couple of roads going through it, with several paths as well, but I thought that I was at the correct place. I texted Drew, telling him that I thought I was there, I looked around and I saw that there was one other car in the parking lot. I thought it was Drew at first, however, I could see that nobody was inside of it. I asked Drew if that was his car, and Drew responded to my text saying that he was there, but he didn't have a car. He said he rode his bike, and that he was a little ways down the bike path. I got out of my car and walked over to what looked like the biking path. Then I started to walk down it. I made it a little ways down, but saw no sign of Drew. I even called out for him once, but I got no response. At that point, I decided to text him again. When I did, he quickly responded, telling me that he was there. I told him that I was there too, but I couldn't find him. He got kind of frustrated, it seemed, and texted me something like, Dude, are you dumb? I'm right in front of your face. Now I was really confused, because I just wasn't seeing him. It was pretty dark out, and there wasn't that much lighting other than a couple of little street lights. I put my phone back into my pocket, and then yelled out to Drew. I said, Drew, where are you? I'm right here. At first, there was nothing. Then, I finally heard a voice. It was a man's voice saying, Where are you? I couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from, or if it was even on the path. Then, the voice yelled out to me again. He said, Put the cash and your phone on the ground now. I was really confused. Why? I asked. Drew responded, saying that he was in the woods and he could see me, and that he had a gun. I looked around, but couldn't immediately spot him. He yelled at me to stop looking around, and do what he said, or he would shoot me. I wasn't even thinking about if he actually had a gun or not, but for some reason, I just decided to run. I sprinted back the way I had come from, and as I ran, I hoped that I wouldn't hear any gunshots. Thankfully, I didn't, and the farther I got away, the faster I ran. I could feel the adrenaline running through my body. At last, I made it back off the path and into the parking lot. I didn't stop sprinting until I had made it back inside my car, and then screeched away out of there. I drove back to my college dorm, and felt incredibly lucky to be alive. I also still had the cash and my phone as well. The next day, I found Alex and told him how his friend had tried to rob me at gunpoint. Alex couldn't believe what I was saying at first, but he admitted that he considered Drew to be a pretty shady character. He said that he and Drew were not that close of friends anyways. We agreed that it should be reported to the police, which I did, and Drew was apprehended for the incident. The next week, I got a new iPhone from the Apple store.
So, this oil is for is for your friend. What's his name? For your friend, friend Alex, Andrew. Right. Tie them up, both of them. To a chair, have their mouths open so they can't close. Get some oil. Let it let it let it cook. Let the oil get hot for a week straight. Just let it burn for a week straight. If the oil dies down, put some more oil in there. Make sure the oil is at least 7,000 degrees. At least. Get a glass. Pour the oil in the glass. And go back to your people's. Make sure their mouth is still open. It's just ever so slightly. Pour the oil down their throat. You don't want to hurt them or anything. I mean, you don't want to like kill them. You know that seven thousand degree hot oil. It might, you know, burn a little bit, like, like something slight, you know what I mean? Not, not, not too crazy, you know what I mean? Because that was a glitch-ass move. Because I felt like Alex and Drew were both in cahoots when he should have just went to the Apple store in the first place. Or to your phone carrier. You know what I mean? They got some great deals. That shit is crazy. Oh my god. This story takes place back when I was younger. I was 13 at the time. And the year was 2013. For my birthday, I received a brand new iPad from my parents. This was probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten and I was really excited about it. I set it up and then immediately began downloading all the fun and cool apps that were popular back then. A lot of games and social media apps. I was also brand new to social media in general at the time and had just recently created an Instagram, Snapchat, as well as a Facebook. One of the apps that I got on the iPad was the Kick app, which was really popular for instant messaging back then. I remember that. I got it mainly to chat with my friends and things like that, because back in the day, Snapchat didn't have a chat function, and Instagram didn't have direct messages either. I would say that about two weeks or so after receiving my new iPad, I was using it all the time and having lots of fun. It was summer vacation from school, so I had plenty of time on my hands. But one night, as I was on kick, I got a message from a user that I didn't know. I don't remember exactly what the username was, but the profile image was like a cartoon guy's face. I remember they started out by saying hi, and their name was Bob. I responded and we began chatting. Wow. At the time, I was just bored and we chat with anybody on the app. It was the internet and I was fairly new to it all. I remember that I chatted on and off with Bob for probably two days or so. It was very basic at first. And I think we would just talk about like what we were doing and how our days were going. Okay. Wait a minute. I, I don't know. I forgot how old you were. Well, you said you're new to the internet. And that person named Bob Messages, me message you. You know it's weird. Anytime I hear the name or see the name Bob, I instantly associate it with a grown ass man. I have never in my life met a Bob that was a kid or a teenager. 
the Bobs I have that I've met over my lifetime has always been grown. A grown ass man. That's weird. Maybe I'm tripping. I just haven't met a young kid or a teenager named Bob. So I'm pretty sure he's talking to a grown ass man. And Bob is probably on some clutch shit. It came out of nowhere when he asked if he could come over to my house. Oh! I told him no because I doubt he lived anywhere near me and I didn't even know who he was in real life. His response to this was that he lived right by me and he could come over at any time. Wow. I had never told him where I live and I didn't have it anywhere on my profile, so I was a little bit weirded out by Bob now. I didn't respond to him and I decided that I wouldn't talk to him anymore. Instead, I just talked to my friends that I already knew on kick. The next day, Bob messaged me again on kick. He asked me what I was doing and if I wanted to hang out today. This time, I didn't bother responding to him at all, and I just ignored it. I figured that he would probably stop talking to me too, but he didn't. That night, I was up really late playing on my iPad in my bedroom. It was the summer, so I didn't have to be up early the next morning or anything. It was probably like midnight, and I saw a notification that I had a message on kick. It was Bob sending me yet another message. I clicked on it to see what he said this time. He said that he was at my house and asked if he could come inside. I figured that he had to be joking, and this was a pretty crazy thing for him to say to me. What? I texted back to him with a bunch of question marks. He replied very quickly, saying that he was at my house and I should come outside so that I could meet him. I responded, saying that I didn't believe him. Just then, I heard the sound of a knock coming from my bedroom window. I jumped up when I heard it. My bedroom window was mostly covered by blinds, but I could partially see out of it, and from what I saw, I could see a hand and part of an arm. I texted Bob to go away and leave. He didn't reply to my text on kick. Instead, he knocked again. I walked over and looked to see who exactly it was. I pulled the blinds back a little and saw that Bob was some random guy who was much older than me. See? He was short and sort of big. He was waving at me and signaling me to open my window. Instead of doing that, I jumped back and closed my blinds up. Then I ran away. I ran out of my room to my parents' bedroom and woke them up. Long story short, by the time my parents got up and knew what was going on, Bob was already gone. As a result of this, we had to go to the police, and my parents did not let me use the Kick app or any social media for a while. I remember my parents saying that the Bob guy deleted his account after the incident, and I don't know if he was ever found. Goddamn Bob. Yo, if your name is Bob, get that. don't ever talk to me, ever, ever. Sorry, it's just the way it is. This is the story of when I sold my used iPad three years ago. My iPad was fairly new, and I had bought it brand new at the time. I had it for about two years, but I didn't need it anymore, and wanted to see how much money I could get for it. It worked great, and had no damage or problems of any kind, and I felt that I had taken great care of it, with it always being in a case, and never dropped. I chose to list it on Facebook Marketplace, and then deleted everything from the iPad and reset it. The first person to reach out to me regarding it was a woman named Randy. Randy asked if the iPad was still available, and told me that she would pay cash for it that same day. She offered slightly less than I was asking, but I still felt that it was a reasonable price, and I agreed. We decided to meet at a local coffee shop that was a fairly short drive for us both. Several hours later, we both met up. Randy was very nice at first, and I showed her the iPad, and we started it up, and she even set it up right then and there. She then paid me the cash, and we went our separate ways. I was satisfied with the sale, and hoped that she would enjoy the iPad. Only four days later, though, Randy messaged me again. This time, she told me that the iPad was broken and that I was a scammer. Okay. She demanded that I refund her money immediately. Of course, I was shocked to hear this. Of course. There's no refunds. Sorry. And plus, I used that money... to get some Adidas 26,000s. Hey, mama. Oh. And I asked her what the problem with the iPad was. She didn't tell me what was wrong with it, though. Of course. She just said that it didn't matter, and all that mattered was that I was a scammer, and if I didn't refund her the money immediately, she would go to the police. I told her that I wanted to know exactly what happened, because maybe it was a simple fix. 
and personally, I just couldn't believe that the iPad was broken because it had always worked so well for me, and to be honest, I barely ever used it. I originally bought the iPad thinking I would use it a lot more than I did. I told Randy that if the iPad was in fact broken, I would be happy to either help her get it fixed or refund her the money, but I needed to know if it was actually broken and she wasn't just making it up to get a free iPad. Then I asked her once again to describe the problem to me, and I even offered to meet up with her that night. She got really mad at this, and she only told me that it wouldn't turn on, and that she wanted me to Venmo her, and she sent me her Venmo username. I was now really starting to suspect that she was just trying to con me, and there was nothing wrong with the iPad at all. We went back and forth for a little bit with me wanting to meet up with her so she could show me the problem, and her not wanting to meet, and me to just Venmo her. In the end, I told her that I was not going to refund her unless she proved to me that the iPad didn't work. She refused, and then threatened me, saying that she knew where I lived. She then said that she had followed me home after I sold her the iPad. Jesus. I had no clue that she had done this, but I couldn't think of why she would do this unless she was up to no good. At that point, I blocked her and decided to take a break from Facebook. This wasn't the end of it, though. That night, at almost 11 p.m., there was a pounding at my front door. I walked over to the front of my house and looked outside. I was expecting to see Randy, but it wasn't. There was some guy standing there. He was a bigger guy wearing a hood, and I really couldn't see his face. He was pounding on the door extremely loud. This went on for probably 10 minutes straight. Damn! Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore. I called the police, and then screamed to the guy that I had called the police, and I wasn't going to answer the door. Okay. He didn't leave, though, and stayed there. Eventually, the police did arrive, and were able to sort out the whole thing. The guy was Randy's boyfriend. They were, in fact, trying to scam me into giving them the money back, and there was nothing wrong with the iPad at all. I feel lucky that I didn't end up giving them a refund, and I can't believe the lengths that they went to to try to get a free iPad. That's an iPad, though, like. It's not that serious. It's never that serious. Nothing lasts forever. What do you call it? It's a material thing. And it's an iPad. Like, if you're willing to, like, break somebody bones or beat somebody up or kill somebody over, over, over something that you can just get, like, you're crazy. It's an iPad. It's an iPad. It's a... Same thing goes with anything else. You know, it's a, it's a phone. You know what I mean? Now, granted, you can't really say that with, like, everything. You can't say that, like, with the house or, like, a car or, like, something that, that you absolutely need. But it's an iPad. It's an iPad. Calm your nerves. Just get one. You just feel like, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.